Congratulations. If you're watching this video, you are taking steps to build your own notary business. Maybe you just got your notary commission and you're thinking, now what? Well, believe me, you are not alone. We here at the NNA have recognized a gap in the resources available to notaries. And part of the reason is because the landscape looks different for every solopreneur. And we have invited a five-time best-selling author and is now such a successful business coach in the notary industry. He knows every trick in the book. He's figured it out and he's ready to share with you today. So thanks for joining us, Bill. The road to building your notary business could take many turns, but instead of feeling overwhelmed by that, let's get excited about the possibilities because that's part of what's great about being a notary. You can pave the path that's right for you and find opportunities that work for you, your family, and your circumstances. You get to decide what success looks like. Oh, I love that. This business changed my life completely, and I love to share it. I know it can do the same for you. My name is Bill Soroka. I'm the founder of notarycoach.com, and I'm on a mission to help you serve more clients, make more money, and build a business that thrives no matter what's going on in the economy. Here's what you're going to learn today in this video. First, we're going to discuss some of the details on what business formation could look like for you. Second, we're going to give you easy ways to be ready for your very first customer. And then we'll just preview a few of the various specialties and the other opportunities that you have to monetize your notary commission today. Are you ready for this, Susan? I'm so ready. I think we're all so ready. All right. So first things first, establishing your identity and brand as a notary, forming your business ent entity, and determining how people will contact you to get the work. I know a lot of folks will procrastinate on building their businesses just because of this first step. They can't resolve what they want their business name to be. They might even get lost in the, the creative process of it. The I know that's part. what I would. Yeah, exactly. It's like, oh my gosh, I've got my own business. Now what am I going to call it? This stuff can be complicated. It can be totally overwhelming. Branding, business formation, marketing, it's all complex. And there are entire industries devoted to teaching the strategies within them. But remember, one of the biggest advantages to starting a notary business is how simple it can be to get started. When you're first starting out, don't sweat this too much. It's easy to slip into analysis paralysis and get distracted with the minutia and sacrifice the big goal, which is getting and serving customers. And making some money. Making yeah. some money mm -hmm. and then building a business that thrives no matter what's happening in the housing market or the economy in general. When I first started out, I used my name, William Soroka, know the Republic. And that sounds so professional. It worked. Yeah. And it continues to work. So if you're just starting out and you're not really excited or passionate about a business name for you yet, you can use your name as well. Remember, you can always evolve your business brand and your name as you grow. I changed my business name five or six times throughout the course of my career. And guess what? No one noticed. Aside from who they had to make the checkout to, my clients didn't even care what my business name was. As far as they were concerned, they're just hiring Bill, the notary. Yeah. So you just want to keep it simple. Keep it simple. People hire people because once you choose a name, secure the domain. Your domain name is like your address on the World Wide Web. Like the NNA has www.nationalnotary.org. That's their domain address. And yours, www.notarycoach.com. You got it. Those are our respective domain addresses. So you want addresses like these to be easy to spell and easy to remember. You don't have to have a website yet. But to protect your brand in the future, this domain name is an important asset for your business. You don't need a logo either to proceed. I know, I'm sorry, I'm not sorry. Sorry to break your heart, <laughs> Susie. But after coaching thousands of notaries across the country, I found that logos are fun to create, but they can actually just be resistance and avoidance to doing the things that actually drive revenue. That said, if the logo is part of what brings you joy, Create one with the free version of canva.com. Now here's the trick though. Limit yourself to just one hour only of design time. After one hour, roll with what you have and don't sweat it because you can redesign it later or pay someone else to do it after, after you start, start making, making some money. money. <laughs> and finally, verify with your state and local rules for registering a business name. This is often called a DBA, which simply means doing business as. Bill, that brings me to another big question for many. Sometimes this is on top of mind for them. It's, uh, what is, what do I need to do? DBA, sole proprietor, LLC, corporation. So what do you have to say about all of that? I totally agree. This is one of the most frequently asked questions about notary work, Susie. And I have a lot to say about it. But first, a disclaimer, right? I'm not an attorney, nor am I a tax professional. So I'm just sharing some insight from my own experience and that of thousands of notaries that I've coached through the years. 
There really are all kinds of business entities in existence, but there are four that are the most popular among notary entrepreneurs. So probably the least popular option is the corporation because of the complexity of the documents and setting that all up. Next, you will have an S corporation, which is a little easier to set up, but still number three, the limited liability company or an LLC is very popular. Number four, the sole proprietorship is the most common because it's the easiest to start because there's no formal organization requirement. So no documents to set up. There's really no correlation between business structure and legitimacy or trust in the marketplace in an industry like ours. When it comes to formal organization of a business entity, there's really only two main reasons to consider and it doesn't have anything to do with your customers. Number one is asset protection. Formal organization of your business might separate your personal assets from business liabilities. Note the might. There's okay. a lot of nuances to this. Okay. The second consideration is tax efficiency. With the right amount of income, assets, liabilities, employees, and deductions, there may come a day when it makes sense to formally organize simply because of the tax benefit. Okay. Now, if you're concerned with either of these two reasons right now in your business, then you must please consult with an attorney or a certified public accountant that can guide you through advice on your particular situation. Yeah. But just know for the grand majority of us, for almost all of you out there, we're ready to roll right now as a sole proprietor. I want to offer one other caveat here. Okay. As notaries public, we hold an office of integrity. So if you are going to operate as a sole proprietor, check in with your state and local laws on whether or not a business license might be required. Adhering to those rules is an important part of integrity. Yes, always be sure to check the legal requirements in your city, county, and state, just like you do as a notary. All the time, right. Yeah. You've really helped to simplify things and help us to know how easy it can really be at the beginning. Awesome. All right, this leads me to another popular question, Bill. Mm -hmm. Okay, you mentioned protecting your assets. So what about insurance for my business? Yeah, that's another great and very popular question. <clears throat> and here's another surprise disclaimer. I am not an insurance agent and I'm not offering specific advice on your situation. Bill Soroka is not an insurance agent and is not offering specific advice. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> what I can tell you though, is that in some states, uh, there might even be a requirement for you to have minimal errors and omissions insurance as a notary public. And as a certified notary signing agent, many companies will actually require a specific e &O policy be in place before they will hire you. It's also important to note that most e &O in our industry, like even the policy offered by the NNA, only covers notarization mistakes right. and not other business errors that might come up in the yep. course of your work. So for issues that arise outside of notarization mistakes, some notaries opt to install an umbrella professional liability policy in addition to their notary e &O insurance. Now, I know that's a lot to think about. This is why now is the perfect time to start building your advisory board. If you don't have a trusted insurance professional yet, seek some good counsel and get advice on what's best for you. Yes. And I want to take a minute to clarify the difference between E and O insurance for notaries and the sometimes required bond for notaries. Yes. So yeah, the bond is actually required in most states to protect the signer to protect the public from the notary so that if the notary does make a mistake then the surety that holds the bond will automatically reimburse the signer for any financial loss but that doesn't mean the notary's off the hook because now the notary has to turn around and reimburse the surety for the amount paid out uh, that's why e and o insurance is the best way to protect you the notary from any of those mistakes that you could possibly make that way the insurance company can turn around and take care of what's owed yes well this is where the fun part begins susie be ready for yes. So soon, your phone is going to start ringing and dinging. Let's be sure you're set and ready to masterfully deliver your services when that happens. So here are three ways to be ready for your first customer. Okay, let's get ready. All right, number one, be sure you have all the necessary supplies to perform your duties. Think about your seal and stamp, pins, notarial certificates, your notary bag, a notary journal, everything that you need to be able to perform the duties of a notary public. The second thing you want to do is set up your communication channels, and this is huge. Okay. So first you want to decide if you'll use your own personal mobile phone number, or if you're going to use a service like Google Voice, Grasshopper, eVoice, whatever companies you might try out there. Then, and this is very important, we want to record a professional voicemail message. Oh, professional. Okay, Bill. So that means I can't just do my what's up, leave a message voicemail. Um, I probably need to change it to something like, thanks for your call. You've reached Susie Sipkov's mobile notary services. Oh, that sounds pretty good, right? Pretty nice. uh, wait, um, there's more. Um, I'm with another client, but please leave a message and I'll return your call as soon as the signing is complete. That's perfect, Susie. And that going that above and beyond makes 
a huge difference. Yes, the more professional you sound, the better. And then finally, using the domain name that you purchased earlier, remember we were talking about that, reflecting your business name, set up a professional email account. Going that little extra bit makes all the difference. What you want to do is choose an email address like your name or orders at, contact at, or info at yourdomainname.com. And finally, the third way to be ready for yes, one of my favorites, is to wake up and dress up. Get out of bed every day and dress up as if you have a day full of appointments, even if you don't have a single one on the calendar yet. yet. And that's the key word, yet, right? Yet. We're going to manifest by getting up and getting dressed. Okay, in our last success summit, you mentioned there are literally millions of documents out there that require notarization. Um, not just loan documents, which seem to capture the most attention these days, um, but all kinds of different documents. Some of the most common documents you'll see are things like healthcare directives, powers of attorney, permission slips of all different kinds, travel documents, divorce papers, car titles. Notarization can be required or requested on nearly any document in creation. In fact, you and the famous Laura Beeler recently published a book called Beyond Loan Signings, The Ultimate Guide to Monetizing Your Notary Commission with Specialty Notary Work. That's right. It explores the many opportunities out there to diversify your notary business. And by diversify, we mean more business. The industry has called this work general notary work for many years, but you and Laura are switching things up. You called it specialty notary work. So talk about that. Yeah, absolutely. And we got to give credit where credit is due. Laura Buer is the one who coined that phrase, specialty notary work. Through the course of her 20 year career, she started to identify patterns of documents that were repeatable. Okay. So she mm -hmm. started piecing this together and realizing that there's different specialties or niches within notary work. So she could learn more about the documents, learn more about the industry, learn more about the clients to make her a specialist versus a generalist. There really is so much opportunity under the notary umbrella, Susie. In our book, we share nine different specialties that you can focus on to help monetize your notary commission. And that's really just scratching the surface. Right. And we absolutely cannot forget the two most popular and lucrative specialties right okay, now. Okay, tell us what they are. Trust delivery under the estate planning industry and loan signings. But with both of these certifications, what we're talking about here is more than just a piece of paper, yes. more than something to hang on your wall or post on your website. Right. A good certification like these two have major advantages. First, it can introduce you to the skills and strategies that help you perform at a higher level. You learn stuff you didn't know. Second, it boosts your topical confidence and competence. You're going to understand what you're doing. When you understand what you're doing, you feel good about it, so you'll get out there more. Three, it demonstrates to hiring parties like lenders, title companies, signing companies, attorneys, that you have a commitment to your craft. Number four, it might identify you as an expert in your field for additional opportunities. You never know what doors could open up with this. Five, it gives you something to talk about, either online as an, or as an icebreaker in your prospecting and networking conversations. Yes. And finally, number six, my favorite, it helps you stand out in a sea of sameness. Okay, let's talk about NSA certification. Many notaries choose to get the extra education certification and that annual background screening to become a certified notary signing agent. Now, I know loan signings are actually where you got your start in this business, That's right. right, Bill? So can you tell us why uh, getting that NSA certification is so important? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, I think it's so important. I included it in my Sign and Thrive book. I included it in my Sign and Thrive course, if you wanted to sum it all up, because this certification opens doors and helps you get more business. The NSA certification gives you specific training for handling loan documents for title companies, lenders, and signing services. Plus, you learn what the loan signing process looks like from start to finish and how to handle those documents, obtain proper signatures and initials on all the documents, and then how to notarize the ones that require notarization. And of course, as I mentioned, that annual background screening is included in that certification and it's required by most contractors that will hire signing agents. And that's not a National Notary Association originated requirement. That's actually what's required by the Signing Professionals Work Group. SPW. And it's become SPW and it has become the industry standard. One thing that came, comes to mind too is the owner of a boutique signing company. I've relied on signingagent.com, your directory of graduates, to help me fulfill orders across the country. And here's some awesome news. Once you've passed your background screening, you are automatically placed in our signingagent.com directory and verification site. And just like Bill uses it for his signing service, this is the place where thousands of signing services and title companies and lenders and banks seek out signing agents that they want to hire and where they're going to verify that that NSA has been certified. 
If you've been certified as an NSA or just completed a background screening through the NNA, be sure to get on your signingagent.com profile and maximize your chance to be found. All you got to do is beef up your profile. And that's a whole topic that we're going to get into shortly. Yeah. But first, uh, when we talk about plug and play directories, I mean, these just like automatic ways to be seen without having a website, without having a business card. Another uh, a great directory that the NNA has is findanotary.com. And this can also kickstart your business. This directory is for the public to find general notaries, mobile notaries, signing agents. So even if you haven't advertised in any other way, if you subscribe to findanotary.com, you'll be a part of the largest notary directory and search engine in the nation. Yeah. As a notary public, your clients are going to come from two places, your online visibility and your network of relationships. So let's look at online visibility first. This is going to include things like the directory profiles we just yes. mentioned earlier. This could be things like social media, maybe your website, and then the single most important digital asset you'll have is your Google business profile. So let's start with directory profiles, Susie. How did you describe it earlier? Oh, I said you got to beef up your profiles. All right, beef up your profile. <laughs> so let's do it. This is important. Your goal, remember, is to stand out in a sea of sameness. So if you were to look at the grand majority of some of these notary profiles, <laughs> Zongfest, they're pretty basic and plain, <laughs> and that's leaving a lot of money on the table. I speak from personal experience as a signing company owner. I look for the three P's and an O. Three P's and an O. Three Tell P's us about the three P's and O. This is how you can beef up your profile. So, of course, in addition to the standard contact information that every profile should have, you can go above and beyond to help your profiles pop by including, first and foremost, a picture. A picture of you. This is an absolute must. Don't use logos, pictures of cats, scenic vistas. Use your mug. The second P is to share your passion. Your passion to serve, to make a difference, to help people. Tell us a story. Why are you here? Why do you want to help us? And the third P is your personality. Show us a little bit about yourself, the quirky, weird, the unique parts that help you stand out. This will help you attract more of your ideal clients down the road. And finally, the O, and the three P's and an O is three optimization. Okay. Now this might be a little more advanced, but you can get pretty strategic with the keywords and phrases that you use in your profile. This can actually help you rank even higher in those Google search engine results we talked about earlier. Ooh, okay. Um, might I also say that with Find a Notary, um, being through the NNA, our search engine optimization is way up there. So if you drop your Find a Notary profile into your Google, Google business profile, then you're talking about a lot of optimization right there. There's so much power in linking those all of your digital resources together. It just collectively gives you a lot of search engine More, optimization. SEO um, power. Yes, SEO power. Can I also just add one more P? And that's professional. You know, yeah. when we're talking about your picture and your passion and what was the other one, personality? Yeah. Yeah. I love all three of those and we want you to stand out. We want you to shine. But at the same time, find that balance of keeping it professional enough that companies trust to send you out there. Once a notary gets their profile all beefed up, what's next for our online visibility? All right. So let's talk about the most impactful tool you can use to help drive local customers to your notary business. And the best part about it is that it's 100% Free. Ooh, I like the sound of that. Yeah, who doesn't? Google Business Profile is a free suite of services that Google offers so people who are searching for services can find them quickly and accurately. Imagine a prospective customer in your city needs notary services. Where do they go? I'll tell you right now, 90% of them are jumping on their phone and Googling notary the, near me. An optimized Google Business Profile will help ensure that you are the notary the person sees in their search results. Oh, I like that. Yes, so here are the three quick tips for starting your Google business profile. Now, remember, this is 100% free. So don't let the cost of a Google business profile stop you from creating this because there is no cost. It's free. Number two, Google walks you through the registration process. It's super simple, step by step. So even if you're not tech savvy, you can do it. If Susie can do it, <laughs> anyone can do it. <laughs> and finally, one of the biggest resistance I've heard from notaries across the country is they were, didn't start their Google business profile because they didn't have a website yet. So you do not have to have a website to start your Google business profile. There's literally nothing in the way from starting your Google business profile right now. If you know what you want to call yourself or your business, you are good to go. Bill, you mentioned customers come from two places. Um, mm -hmm. I think we just covered the one, the online visibility. So what's the second source? Yes, great. The second flow of customers will come from your network of relationships, Susie. This includes everyone you have ever known, everyone you currently know, and everyone you will ever know in the future. Think of your family, your friends, your former coworkers, schoolmates, neighbors, everyone you're connected with 
is part of your network. And that's really a lot of people when you think about it. Like I just, I look on my Facebook uh, profile and I'm like, oh, look, I didn't even know I knew that many people. It, it's amazing. In fact, most new notaries greatly underestimate their network. Most people think they only know less than 100 people. But after you go through your phone, your text messages, your emails, your, your social, social media, media mm -hmm. and your DMs, you'll likely realize that you're actually connected to well over a thousand people. Some people find they're connected to 7,500 to 10,000 people through social media and email. Wow. Now what's crazy about this is that I truly believe that you probably already know exactly who you need to know to build the dream business that you want. And if you don't know that person directly, you're probably just one single introduction away from them. So how do new notaries tap in to that true value of their network? And that's the question. The key to success in a service-based business like this is to warm up your network. Keep yourself top of mind because if it's true that you already know the person you need to know to make this business anything you want, then you've got to stay in touch with them. And here are four ways to keep yourself top of mind. First, tell everyone about your business. This is a unique business that you can be proud of. It's legitimate and that the work really matters. We're helping people on their best days and on their worst days. So mm. seeing it from the rooftops, but not really. <laughs> Use good old fashioned conversations to share your business or at the very least, do it in a text message. I'm a notary and I can help you. I tell you, she's writing jingles. <laughs> the second thing you wanna do is use social media to build deeper relationships and give people a chance to get to know, like, and trust you. Share a little bit of your journey, your day-to-day -day work, and the passion that you have to serve them. Avoid just constantly advertising your services. Nobody likes that. Use Gary Vaynerchuk's strategy of offering value, 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 add. Oh, I like that. That three, one <laughs> ratio is the key. So you do three non-advertisements for every one advertisement. Mm, okay. And finally, you want to expand your network through networking, volunteerism, community involvement, whatever it is. Just join something that lights you up and allows you to be authentically you, even if you're an introvert. Because the brighter you shine, the more of the right business you'll attract. Oh, I like that. So many people are intimidated when it comes to networking because they don't know how to get the conversation started. And just coming out and saying, oh, I'm an owner is, you know, not natural letting it happen organically where you're just doing something else that you love and and shining through that it just kind of automatically evolves absolutely that's just a way to grow your network remember your network is already bigger than you think it is and as you start participating in your community other events classes workshops volunteering here whatever it is for you you'll start to get to know more and more people and inevitably part of the conversation is going to be so what do you do and finally follow up and stay in touch with people this doesn't have to be super formal or anything fancy. Just check in every now and then and then demonstrate how much you care about them and that you're ready and willing to serve. I do know a few notaries who actually, when they meet with someone, they'll make a mental note or they'll even make a note on their phone of something special that's happening with that signer or that potential customer so they can follow up genuinely. Yeah, and make it very, that personalization factor is so important. And this can be with your signers. This can be with your second cousin twice removed that you've been wanting to stay in touch with, but you didn't. Literally everybody in your network deserves some follow-up. Uh, you know, what if someone doesn't have three or four months to get their business off the ground? They're like, I need to make money now, like tomorrow or at least next week. So can you give us kind of a breakdown of what a quick start notary business plan might look like? Heck yeah, okay. I totally get it because I was in that position as well. I think my 23rd or 24th business was failing. <laughs> I was flat broke. I had to start making money right away. So why don't we make some basic assumptions and create your next five steps for making money as a notary public right now. Okay, let's this do it. Just one strategy for you. So let's review what we learned today and we'll just make some decisions. So okay. how to establish your business. We talked about this. So if you want to get started right now, be a sole proprietor. Yeah, don't complicate it. Just boom. Boom, your business. Now begin. <laughs> Second, we talked about being ready for your first customer. So Susie, what are the absolute bare essentials, bare essentials for notaries? You gotta have your tools for the job, your stamp or seal, your notary journal, pens, the notarial certificates that you might need to attach, and a thumb printer if it's required in your state. Perfect, that's all you need to get the job done. Boom. Then, I'm boom. I'm gonna say boom after everyone. Boom. Boom. Then we talked about how to diversify your revenue streams as a notary. Now, you can immediately just focus on general notary work. That's right. You can go out there and start notarizing documents as soon as you have a notary commission and the tools that you need. Boom. Right? Boom. Boom. But also consider choosing the two most profitable specialties right now. That's going to be loan signings and trust delivery work. The faster you can move from generalist to specialist, the more money you'll start making. Then we also talked about how to boost your online visibility. So your top priority right now is to optimize the two directories we talked about from the NNA, yeah. signingagent.com 
and findanotary.com, then also, very important, start your free Google business profile immediately. There you go. Boom. Boom. <laughs> and finally, you got to heat up and expand your network. Tell everyone about your business. In fact, let's give you some homework. Tell 10 people in your network every single day via phone, in person, text message, social, GMs, media. social media, whatever. Have a conversation about your business. Be proud of what it is, the value that you bring to this community. And that is your notary quick start business plan. And seriously, Bill, like two hours a night for one week, you've been able to do all of that and you're ready to start making money. Easy. Okay, we've covered a lot of ground in a short time. Bill, I just can't thank you enough for joining us today and providing a great launching pad for our new notarypreneurs. Now, obviously this is just the beginning and there are so many great resources out there to support you on your journey. The NNA, of course, is committed to providing support by bringing in experts such as Bill Soroka here. And we will continue to keep the notary community connected to the very best platforms for learning and growing. And of course, our Success Summit is one of those opportunities. Uh, Bill, you were a part of our last success, you're a part yes. of a lot of our Success Summits because you just have so much goodness to bring to us, giving us actionable steps every time, accessible resources to really go out there and start working now. Yeah. Bill, any last words of advice? Well, thank you for the kind words and thank you for having me here today. So um, I think my parting words will be this, honor the office that you hold. Um, we've sprinkled in the conversation today that this work really does matter and we really do make a difference in commerce and in lives, helping people on their best mm -hmm. days and on their yeah. worst days. Do everything you can to master the skills to do this work. The best way you can guarantee repeat customers is to do the job correctly. When it comes to access to information and resources in today's technology age and information age, you really don't have a shortage. In fact, I would venture to say that you really don't have an information problem. You're going to have an execution problem. So mm. it's incredibly important that you implement everything that you've learned today. So go out there, start making that schedule now. If it's not scheduled, it's not real. Right, Maui? What gets scheduled gets done. That's right. So go do it.